The following interview was conducted with Professor Donald Gustafson, the Leo P. Doyle Professor Emeritus of Veterinary Vi Virology for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, June 11, 2009 at his home in West Lafayette. Welcome, Dr. Gustafson, and good afternoon to you. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents in early years. Okay. Um, I was born in uh, Columbus, Ohio on uh, May 21, 1920, and uh, I uh, lived in Columbus until I came to Purdue. Um, now let's talk a little bit about high school and your oh early yeah, years. Oh, okay. Then, well, yeah. in, in, um, in high school, um, uh, I joined a I joined a, a boys social club, um, and uh, we had dances and club meetings, and we pretty much hung together. And the girls had had girls clubs, and we uh, socialized with them. And um, I, since I had been a pretty good student um, in the earlier years, I had skipped several grades, and. Uh, was um, smaller than most people. I didn't even weigh 100 pounds when I graduated from high school. Uh, but I played a lot of intramural basketball. But all the guys that I played with down at the YMCA in Columbus were behind me, but they were my age. And when they came to North High School, they played on varsity team. But I was, I was kept out of all that. So, um, I uh, took the academic course. There were two college prep courses, or two courses of study. One could go into the uh, arm and hammer type thing, and uh, or it could go in the academic side. I was, like the majority of students, went to the academic side, and. Uh, How large was your high school? Uh, we had. 1,500 students in there, so there were about 500 and some in my graduating class. Land of hope and glory, mother of the free. We sang that in the Columbus Auditorium and uh, on graduation day, like the rest of the students in high schools around Columbus. There were northeast, southwest, and central high schools. That's all there was to it, five high schools. and. Uh, um, it was an interesting experience, and um, I was um, uh, a member of the student council, and, and um, I talked my way out of being on the library <laughs> and student staff because of my big mouth, not because of my lack of interest in it, because that was really a plum. And um, Miss Kelly asked me. If uh, if I would like to be a member of it, and then I smarted off, and that was the end of it. And <laughs> well, high high school, and I, I when I um, I graduated, I won a scholarship to Miami University at Oxford, Ohio. So uh, I was a pretty good student in in high school, and I took the state exams and so on. I took exams down at uh, Miami, and uh, strangely enough, I I was. Uh, Second best in mathematics at, at in my freshman class at, at Miami. <laughs> I didn't know I was a mathematician, but I had a real good math teacher. He was very good. So, uh, our high school was fun, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but that's about the way sure. it was. And then, then from there, you went to Miami. Well, I went to Miami for one year, oh. and I, I decided to. Uh, that I'd like to go to back to Ohio State. So I transferred out and gave up my scholarship and and came back to Ohio State. Were you, did you live on campus? No, oh. I lived at home. Okay. We, there was That was back in the days when uh, people were selling apples on the corner downtown and there wasn't yeah. anybody who had, had a nickel to buy an apple. And what was the uh, enrollment like in, during those times in the schools? Was it, what's that? What was the enrollment in, in the college? Was it? Oh, well, uh, the largest school in the Big Ten at that time was Minnesota, and they had 10,000 students on campus. We had about 8,000. 
And so we knew a lot of people on, on oh, campus. Yeah. And I joined Sigma Chi fraternity. And uh, I became Rush chairman. And uh, I had held an office in the fraternity. And uh, did you commute then back and forth? You lived at home while while you, all four year, three oh, years, three years. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. On the streetcar, we took the streetcar when we had to, and then there were other people who had lived. Uh, Columbus students pretty much lived at home. Uh, for this, for, I don't know why, but I would rather imagine for similar reasons. Sure, right. And there were. In our fraternity, in fact, we had a we had some guys there that they couldn't pay their bills, but we carried them anyway. And when their shirts would come back from the laundry, they were torn. I mean, they, they shattered, and um, they were guys were struggling to get through college. Was there any sort of financial aid assistance during those days at all, or for people? Oh, they probably didn't have work well, study. Well, I don't know whether oh. there was or not. Okay. Uh, did some of them work on campus, though? Cause they had a program there called, I don't know what it was now. But at any rate, it was a national program. Okay. And, uh, but really, the, the fees were only $25 a quarter. Like Purdue's used to be there. There wasn't any tuition years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> yeah. The legislature so, educates the people of the state. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, anyway, I... Any professor that sticks in, what was your major then while you were at Ohio State? I was in uh, business administration. Okay. I graduated from the College of Commerce and Business Administration. And uh, I found that uh, I was, uh, I was uh, and I've always enjoyed geography and history. And um, you can see around my house I'm uh, interested in history. And... Uh, I, I took, uh, the only course I ever flunked was accounting. And you're the mathematician, you said. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not mathematics. I, know. <laughs> I, know. I learned that myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was sure. good at, at uh, we had three courses. There were three quarters. We went on the quarter system, which I liked better than the semester system. Right. But And I talked with Parkey about that, and he said that means that I got to do my job three times instead of two. And so I just I, I, I just let it go with that. But at <laughs> any rate, we had uh, sole proprietorship, partnerships, and corporate accounting. Corporate accounting, I flunked. They had too many little dibby dips I couldn't. I fl and there were 30-some students in the class that I was in, and 28 of us flunked. That tells you something. <laughs> and and the, as a matter of fact, well. the, our instructor, our teacher, our our professor, excuse me. No, that's okay. Put your feet up. I'm fine. Uh, um, he had flunked the CPA test 20-some times. <laughs> but while we were there, he passed it, finally passed the thing. He became a CPA. <laughs> but he was a, he was fine. And there, I don't have any, I was surprised <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. McCoy couldn't make it. He was a good guy. But, well, and uh, I enjoyed economics. I've had to, I, since I was a good student, they said, um, I was put in an advanced class of, of economics. And my dad was so unhappy with me because one of the kinds of teachings they had was um, that uh, government ownership of the railroads was, imp was a must. And the government ownership of so and so. This was under the Roosevelt administration, and he had a bunch of clunks in there that were trying to to uh, uh, get us away from independence and depending upon the government. And and there's some similar ring of that t today. Somewhat, yeah. And uh, well, uh, but at any rate, he was frightened about that, but it didn't. I, I, didn't, I was just trying to take the course, and I did well in the course, but, um, well, so, uh, and, and I did enjoy the law. We had a segment of law school. We had, uh, we had a, a, a sales and agency and, and uh, torts and, and uh, 
law contracts and business law and all that kind. Of, it was uh, in the in the College of Commerce, and I I enjoyed. It. I could have been a lawyer. Sure. Yeah. I I mean I was interested in it, and uh, uh, then I started fighting the war, and we won that one. And mainly because there were a lot of guys who who were really brave. I was never brave. I was always a coward. Did you serve in the military? Oh, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Well, when did you get then, after you got out, is that when you got your uh, DVM, when you went to vet school? Well, I went to veterinary school while I was in the Army, and the um, Army Specialized Training Program. And they put me through the uh, through veterinary While school. you were serving in the Army? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, is it at Ohio State that's where you went to vet Ohio school? At Ohio State, yeah. Uh-huh. Then I was in the reserves after that mm -hmm. for quite a while, and then I spent um, two more years in uh, on active duty uh, as a uh, as a meat inspector for pity's sake. Uh, you want out? You don't want out. It's raining. <laughs> he wants out, but he's not going. Herman, Herman, their recorder. <laughs> well, anyhow. What came next after that, after you got out, then? Is that well, when I got out, I, um, um, was it a I four got year, out of the military. Four-year program, sorry, four-year program for oh, the vet? N no, we went straight through. Oh, okay, okay. We went through uh, 13 straight quarters of okay. college. Okay, And then uh, I started working for the University of Illinois. In their vet school? No. Oh. And they had a veterinary science department. Okay. They didn't have a veterinary school at that time. And then uh, I got a letter from the United States Army saying that I was no longer a reservist. I was on active duty. So I went, I went to, to the Army. I became a, a loot, first lieutenant in the, in the veterinary corps. And then I graduated as a captain, Captain Gusserman. <laughs> well, that was a wonderful experience of uh, in that meat inspection business. I worked at Kingans in Indianapolis. I worked in at the Home Packing Company in in Terrible Haute, Indiana. And uh, I, uh, then I worked in Louisville and I, in the Louisville Military District, and I got out of the military. At that, I was discharged, separated, not discharged. I was separated at uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky. Huh. Oh. Then I. Uh, were you were you married at that time? Had no, you, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't afford a wife. Uh, I couldn't afford that responsibility. So, at any rate, there wasn't anybody who wanted to marry me and, uh, that I knew of. Um, so then I, I... What did I do then? Oh, I started working for... Uh, 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 a company that was, we were constructing a, um, a building in downtown Columbus, right there on the main street downtown, and trying to connect it to the building next to it. And, and uh, I was on the uh, engineering staff. I ran a, 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 a I, I made sure that the, we were building the the, the uh, building straight up and stood out over the street. Right. So you had to build your, you had to uh, line it up. Transit and uh, transit, level. Right. The level, right. Yeah, that's right. Well, that was uh, that was a business. And then, uh, then I went into practice, uh, veterinary practice in Cloquet, Minnesota, up there uh, outside of Duluth. Duluth, Minnesota, and I went to those good kinds, Finn people. And it's cold up there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was pretty cold, yeah. Yeah. That's where the uh, the ships, the the freighters on the Great Lakes 
go up to Duluth. That's where your iron iron. Oh was yeah. Well, see, my mother was from Marinette, which is right across the river from from Duluth. Okay. okay. My mother was from Superior, Wisconsin. My father was from Marinette. Okay. And uh, uh, so, but I liked it up there. I had a good time, except that the guy that I worked for was impossible. What kind of practice was it? Small or? Oh small no animal? no. No, uh, this was dairy oh, for the most okay. part, dairy practice. Okay. And uh, oh, we'd go out to, the, to those good kind Finn farms. And I loved those people. They were great. There was, and there was a bar on every intersection of roads up there. <laughs> and <laughs> very social. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that was great. Uh, so that's then I I came out of that and uh, I went back to Columbus, Ohio. That's when I would join the the uh, uh, engineering crew. After I got after I quit up there in Minnesota, I came back here and I did that. And from there, um, a, a friend of ours up the street was on the faculty at Ohio State, and he talked me into the possibility of coming to Purdue because uh, Harold Moses was here, and Harold was a, an Ohio State grad. And he w had been at, at Harvard at, uh, uh, in the medical school there. Um, and he came here and was uh, interested in a parainfluenza virus. Uh, and it was a uh, disease that it produced was called Newcastle disease because of Newcastle on Tyne in England. And eventually I visited the Newcastle on Tyne, which is a disgusting place. And um, so I came to Purdue, and uh, what year was this that you came? Nineteen forty-eight. Okay. And I started on the faculty, or on the, as a graduate student here, in January the first, nineteen forty-nine. Um, and uh, in what department were you doing graduate studies in? Something in the in Department Agri of Veterinary Science. Oh, which was part of agriculture. At part that time. of the School of Agriculture, okay. yeah. And um, they've never forgotten it. They still think we're, uh, uh, that the School of Veterinary Medicine is part of agriculture. And uh, I, I was referred to shortly, just in the last week or two, as a former member of the Department of Veterinary Science. Sometimes these things hang on for a long time. It's well, interesting, I, I, you know, whatever. I, I, yeah. I gave up. Yeah. I mean, well, I then um, then you, when the school opened in 59, you moved over there? Oh, yeah. I was okay. there uh, at the beginning. And when well, you the, finished your graduate. You got your Ph.D.? Oh, yeah. Okay. I got that in 53. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, uh, the po politics of that uh, origin of the veterinary school is, is really an, a kind of an interesting story in itself. And the one little thing that happened that's a, kind of a uh, uh, interesting poli politically vis-a-vis -vis what's happening today was that uh, one of the would-be students, I, I, I started the pre-veterinary club at Purdue. I was the original, and I was the counselor, the one counselor to principal, to the people who wanted to be admitted to the veterinary school. Well, one of these guys was politically muscled, and there was a fellow who was very much opposed to the establishment of a veterinary school at Purdue in the legislature. And, this, and to make it short, this kid told him to go home. The guy went home. He wanted to be reelected. <laughs> it was up in the region, and uh, interesting. Uh, we always thought that was pretty comical. This kid never got into veterinary school. He was never admitted. <laughs> uh, That's how it worked out. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, but that was, that was an interesting thing. And then there was the the fight between wanting to have, have the diagnostic lab in Indianapolis and up here. And that was that's got some conflicts going within the veterinary profession and that lasted for quite a while. And then those fellows all eventually died off. Sure. 
Uh, tell me, what for research, what was the size of the veterinary science pro, uh, program at, when you came? I mean, were there many uh, students in it? Oh, oh no, there oh. were, there were, uh, huh. in the graduate program, there was, uh, there were four of us. Okay. Four of us. One of them went to, one of the guys, Max, uh, he went to, in the, back into practice at Brazil, Indiana. And then he started working for a little company down there. And, and they, uh, par I don't know, but Max, he was, he was a great guy, a uh, little bitty guy. And then there was, there were guys who got their PhD there, here at Purdue, a Polish fellow from New Jersey, good guy. He, was a he wanted to be a pathologist. Eventually, he uh, was on the, um, uh, in, uh, worked for the uh, company in uh, New Jersey one of the big companies um, yeah, as a pathologist and uh, then there was yeah and Russell and and the other guy there were four of us okay. five of us I guess All right. where'd you live when you were when you came as a grad student was how what was housing like when you came where did you live oh I lived with uh, professor uh, Ray cable over here on on uh, on uh, the next street over. Okay. And uh, he was a wonderful man. Jeez, he was a great guy. I would come down there. I had my little room, and uh, which was very nice. And I, I'd come downstairs at night, and there would be Ray laughing, all by himself in the by the fireplace in the big living room, sitting there in his uh, bathrobe and laughing because he was reading German. And, uh, and he, well, he was he was a very bright man, and sure. we, uh, I liked him. We, uh, we very had, pleasant. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I knew him, knew him for years, and uh, that's where I lived. And then uh, one day, into my, because uh, I was taking a course that was taught by. Um, the little guy who was a head of uh, biological sciences over here, and he went to Minnesota. And uh, Koffler? Henry, yeah, Henry Koffler? Yeah, Henry Koffler. Well, I was taking this course with Henry Koffler. It was supposed to be the toughest graduate course in the university at the time. That was its reputation. And um, it was a good course. It was in the, in the uh, physiology of bacteria. And uh, they had some interest instrumentation over there that uh, was kind of unique. Uh, and uh, oh, we, well, at any rate, this guy, I was, uh, turned out he was a Sigma Chi from someplace, to, so we were, had, had a little link there. And, and uh, one day, in my, when I was down in my office, he came over because he wanted to do something or another, and he brought this girl with him, and that's uh, Lois right there. And so, um, she wanted, I loaned her my car. I had a, a brand new 1948 Mercury Coupe, beautiful blue thing. And uh, uh, I loaned it to her and she, she was okay. Was she a student at Purdue? Yeah, she was uh, in uh, um, child development. Okay. So we decided to develop some children. <laughs> Together, right? Yeah. <laughs> As a team. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Sounds good. We had five. Uh huh. And uh, where was she, where was your wife originally from? She was, was she? from a little town called Clark's Green, Pennsylvania, which was a bedroom community for Scranton. Okay. And her father was an architect, and he uh, drew up uh, hospitals and high schools and. He did not like to do homes because of the women that were involved. They were all the time wanting to get something done and they wanted to change it again. And so he didn't like that. But so he built churches for free. He designed churches for nothing and, and he did uh, schools and his own church. And uh, it was a Methodist church there in, in Clark's, uh, Clark's Green. It was a lovely community. Yeah, Scranton is a nice, uh, I've not been there, but I understand it's a nice community. Been there a yeah. long time, the city. It's yeah. a good size. Yeah, uh, we called it Happy Valley. They came from Taylor, Pennsylvania, which is 
on the, on the river, and it was a mining town. And his father was his father was a, a coal miner, and and his mother uh, or his wife was uh, from a farm up up the, up the road, uh-huh. and uh, they both they met at Penn State. She went to Penn State. Lois went to Penn State. And her, her brother went to Penn State and then graduated in veterinary school for, at Cornell. Mm. And um, he worked for Johnson and Johnson and Johnson and Johnson. And uh, did very well over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he lives in Connecticut now at Old Saybrook, right on the shore. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, well, that's how I met Lois, and we remember we, she died uh, 11 years ago. Oh, I've been living here by myself for 11 years, and you can see that I wrecked the place. <laughs> no, it's, it has that lived-in look, and, and my house has got a lot of stuff around it, too. You know, uh-huh. Each corner <laughs> is built. <laughs> uh, well, anyhow, that's... Uh, but then with the vet science, and then when the school opened, you moved over, is that... Which you're gonna uh, will that be the next step? You stayed in after you got your degree. You still did you stay in the veterinary science? I stayed in veterinary medical school. Oh, okay, <laughs> right. But before, before, well, when the school, the school didn't open until '59, so you were still in veterinary science in that department until the school opened. Yeah. Was that was okay. Then we switched over, and I was in the department of veterinary microbiology, pathology, and public health. Okay. Which is now. Bio something or another. Oh, okay. Biological science. No, that's in Biomedi- the Biomedic. I don't know. Pathobiology, it's been called. Names change, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a good idea. Sure. One of the dumb things we did was to name them all Department of Veterinary Microbiology, Department of Veterinary Path- and Physiology, Department of Veterinary Anatomy. We should have just named them Anatomy, Physiology. Because so. they're all within the vet school. Sure. Under that, yeah. And, we, of course, we had the clinics. And uh, we had a, a great guy who was uh, Dean, um, L.M. Hutchings, Pat Hutchings, they call him. But he was a Michigan State grad. He's from Maine. Uh, and uh, he died of, uh, he's, he was working with uh, brucellosis. And that's a, a, a terrible disease. Um, Bangs disease, they called it. It was in cattle, and, and there's another form in sheep, and but there's also a form in man, brucellosis, and it is murderous. Nobody I ever knew that worked with brucellosis ever died of anything normal, unless they got hit by a truck. They all died of some screwy aberration of brucellosis. I think Hutch did do, because he they. When he was sick, <coughs> he was he, head of the veterinary science. Am I correct? And then took over the school when. It, well, the oh. guy who was uh, head of the department when I first started was um, uh, an Iowa State grad who played football over there without his helmet, and his name was Charles Rumple Donham, and uh, he shot himself uh, in his home up there on. Uh, on, uh, over there on the what street did you go to up there? Well, uh, near Sheridan, Sheridan Road. He okay. lived on Sheridan Road, and he he shot himself in the bathroom. The only bathroom in the house ruined the place. His wife couldn't live there anymore. Oh my! She had to move out. I don't blame her. Huh? Yeah. Well, anyhow, uh, when after he shot himself, that's when Hutch became uh, chairman of the department, and he was he was very effective, very good, and. Frederick L. Hovde loved him, said he did. And um, when Hutch died, he had just become dean, been named dean. And um, that's when they hired that dismal, rascal, sociopath um, Erskine V. Morse um, he started out bad he ended up bad he was no count and they finally had to fire him 
uh, he would have guys come into his office and he'd have them in tears and, and they one guy went to Canada uh, remember who, who's uh, Michelle Sala who did she live with I that one guy up to. there and he was over in uh, Free Haver Hall wonderful guy but he was he quit he had to leave because uh, more beat him up in his office not physically but had him crying in his office oh wow and uh, the uh, the guy who was the assistant dean or associate dean which they didn't make much distinction between them at that time he quit and went back into our department that was uh, Edward Halterman and uh, Morse dribbled along and it was it was it was a he was a mess and not only that he was dumb I mean he was not bright he, he never like had he didn't a, have much people uh, skills <laughs> no he didn't have that either I don't know what he had except he was a nice big handsome chap with a big laugh ha 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 open his mouth that wide and uh, I tried to like him but before he was ever hired I met him in Cleveland at a meeting and he said who's going to be ahead of your uh, microbiology department and I told him that I, didn't, I had no idea but as I turned away I said it won't be you use and it wasn't he became Dean <laughs> Which was sick, because one of the, how would you have liked this? It always, whenever I thought about it, it just aggravated the heck out of me. And that is, uh, Frederick Hovde asked he, he asked Earl Butts to take the lead to find us a dean. How would you like to, if somebody came over to the School of Agriculture and said the 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 head of history is going to be going for to, the dean? going to take the lead to find they didn't have a search committee at that time I just said it's all different and he sent one of his guys an economist wonderful guy and I always liked Earl Earl was a, Butts was a great guy but he was uh, <laughs> he was not we should have gotten because yeah. we knew the people because it's the, the really the cadre was pretty small. Oh, I mean, yes, I'm sure. That's Over true. the country, the cadre was pretty small. And, and we there also were fewer schools than not as many oh, as... Oh, absolutely. There were only 10. Sure. Now there are 28 or 36 or I don't know how many. Right. You could name them. I can't name them now. Yeah. I don't know where they are. I mean, all of them. Sure. But anyhow... This guy's dead now, Lee, but he was a real nice fellow. It doesn't make any difference. He, he went out there in. and he picked up, he listened to uh, Erskine and and he brought him in. He thought he was, because Erskine could put on a front. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> there was nothing behind it. Nothing. Well, at any rate, um, he came, and finally, they fired him. And uh, Jack Stockton, who was uh, at the Veterinary College at Ohio State, a student, graduated uh, one class ahead of me, or two classes ahead of me, and uh, was, and had been a leader in, uh, at a, of a after the war group over in Taiwan, or not Taiwan, but uh, Okinawa. And uh, he came back and was uh, in parasitology up at Michigan State. And there was a, uh, a, a, an action, a, a program of action to find a new dean, and I was in part of that. And Frederick L. Hovde uh, offered me the job as dean of the, of the school. and. Uh, I was busy at the time. I was doing things, and I was there. I didn't want to be dean and taken, and and be uh, listening to people come in and crow about. I want if I had become dean, I probably should have, but I probably wouldn't have lasted too darn long because I would I would not I did not suffer fools gladly, I, and we had some, 
and I would probably gotten in trouble that way. But anyhow, I would have had a goal of, of for our school of returning to be included in the university community because we had under those 11 years with that nincompoop, we had, we had become sequestered a little bunch down there. And, and in fact, I, I suppose if you'd ask uh, people on the campus where, is it, they wouldn't even know. I would have had the goal of to, the people to develop some pride in their school and to, to seek their intellectual goals and, and to return with, with uh, cooperative research in uh, departments other, uh, like pharmacy and engineering and biological sciences and uh, uh, when, wherever we could, wherever we'd fit in, uh, to do things of that sort and, and to go. Uh, and, and to, we had horizons that went out out over our belly buttons and down to the floor. That's where <laughs> our horizons were. That's it was a struggle. Yeah. And and I I made a, a vaccine for uh, hog cholera that uh, I sold to uh, through the university through the uh, PRF. Yeah. Uh, uh, to Eli Lilly and Company and to three other companies and. Uh, uh, I reaped a considerable benefit from that, and uh, I was going to be on the program in the Memorial Union, and I said I could vaccinate pigs in a tuxedo, and I could. Oh, no, you don't. Erskine V. Morse stopped that. No, we don't want to have somebody getting sticking up a he didn't. <coughs> he didn't want to have any stars in his program. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to. What he called them were sacred cows. It was his expression for it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well, I was on a hog cholera committee here in Indiana, which is a. We don't have that disease anymore in the United States. Killed my vaccine. Over 25% of the hogs in the United States were vaccinated with my vaccine for during one period. I don't know how many years or what it was. Uh, and uh, in that club, I met my friend Sherman Kessler. Oh. <laughs> And we had, there was a riot in, in our school, intellectually, and uh, we went roaring over to the president's office to complain about Mortz, get him out of here. And the president, Hubdi was, uh, he, he was an intensely loyal type of person. When he, when he hired somebody, he said, do the, do the job, I'll keep my hands out. But, and he did. Well, he was, every once in a while he'd get a sour apple. He did. And uh, but he stuck with him. He, he kept him here, right there uh, when we were starting the veterinary school. Well, eventually, it was just too much, and that's and and, and so he was canned, and and uh, I turned down the job, and they made Jack Stockton dean. Well, you didn't take it. They didn't. Did you? Did they want you on an interim basis or? Uh -uh. Oh, okay. No, oh no. Oh, okay. Fred Humpty was not an interim type man. Okay. <laughs> no. You would do have this, and you would do that, and, you, and then this is certain monies you would have. And so I, I don't do that. Probably should have. <laughs> but my mother was dead. That's one of the things I said. I said <laughs> my mother is dead, and she doesn't care. And <laughs> she's not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, well, well, Phillips was get offered the need of agriculture, and he never, he wouldn't take it. He's dead. I don't recognize him. Well, he was, he was a good guy. And, uh, and I, and I met Felix Haas, and I, yeah, I met Felix Haas at the, I was on the uh, Faculty Affairs Committee in the Senate. And G U H A, pretty close together, and, and around the table. And and uh, uh, they wanted to. I had a lot of uh, interesting. In fact, you remember a guy named Isinger, Isaac Eisenhut? Chuck Isinger. Chet Chuck, Isinger. Ch you know, I recognize Isinger. the name uh -huh. in, in the English department. Yes. Big mouth. Called himself Old Silver Tongue. Uh, tall. He was tall. Yeah. He was a track man at UCLA. <laughs> well, one day in the meeting there, he says, he's, uh, he was, he's getting on me because I'm, I'm, I was, I'm fairly conservative type Republican, don't you know? Um, and anyway, <laughs> he said, oh, I suppose over at your school only white people can drink at the fountains. I said, no, all he has to do is be a Christian. And uh, in this, in the room, they go, <gasps> Jesus, John. Like that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Chet started laughing. And we became friends after that. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, that was one, that was a yeah. little side. I'm going to ask you something and yeah. make a suggestion. We might do this in two parts because I was running, it's running close to four and I was a little bit late. Could, would this be okay? We'll stop at this point sure. and I could do, uh, and that'll give you kind of a chance to think. We'll, we'll leave it at Stockton's coming in and then from there on and then your research is what I'm interested in too as well. Would that okay. be okay? Okay, yeah, well, I, I, I that's, that'll be a bit. Yeah. Uh, and the, uh, how the curriculum changed. Um, and I gave oh, you. I was, see, I was chairman of the curriculum committee. Yes, right. That I know. So that that's another thing. Uh -huh. So I think that this makes a good breaking point if it's okay with you. Oh, sure. Okay. Fine. Um, you can look at your calendar, and I brought my book with me, and we can. See